Are you terrified that you keep hearing that we can't develop any lasting immunity to COVID-19 and so you're hiding out in your house and basically thinking that this is never going to end? This video is definitely for you. So hello, I'm Dr. James Bogash, publisher of Modern Health Myths, and today we're going to talk a little bit deeper about the whole immunity concept and um, how ridiculous the conversations currently going on now are. To start with, we really have no reason to think that COVID-19 is any different from any other virus that we deal with that our body can mount an effective immune response to that's sustained. So uh, we certainly, a, a lot of this started out of um, South Korea where we had this idea that people were getting reinfected. I've addressed this in the past and those people likely either A, weren't cleared in the first place. So they didn't recover. They just had a flare up of what was going on. And uh, also if in the few cases where people really were infected, those secondary infections seem to be much more mild. The other question is if, if we could get reinfected, why are we not seeing massive numbers occurring again across the globe in New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts? It would certainly make sense that there is some degree of protection. So that being said, is the mile high view. We're going to delve a little bit deeper into this. I'll try not to go too deep into, um, into some of the research on here, but as always, there's, I, I will link to this particular study in the comment section. But it goes into pretty deep into things like homology and uh, conservation of proteins across the coronavirus family. So the first thing we need to look at is B cell and T cell immunity. B cell immunity is what we've been hearing about the whole antibody testing and, and we've heard that that immunity starts to wane with time and because of this we can't mount an effective immune response and nobody will ever be saved and we're going to need to just hide out in a cave and completely destroy society. In the meantime, that completely uh, doesn't take into fact uh, it doesn't factor in the, the idea that that happens with other viruses that we maintain, but we also have this whole T-cell thing. I consider T-cells as kind of like the filing cabinet. We have certain T-cells that we file away and is the memory for future infections. So when we get exposed to that virus again, the immune system is able to ramp up a very quick response and fight it off. This is generally what happens. And as a matter of fact, looking at SARS, so uh, the, the previous coronavirus that had raised such a fuss, that even 17 years later, they were still able to elicit T cell responses in these people. So nothing to suggest that this is going to be any different than any other virus or specifically coronavirus that we've come across. Um, so in this particular study, they looked at 24 people who had confirmed cases of, of, from mild all the way up to severe. So it's a small study, but it really starts giving us an idea of what to expect. And there were some very interesting findings when they looked at this. Uh, first of all, a couple things that they found was that um, and they looked at certain proteins that are well conserved. And when we say well conserved, it means that viruses in the whole coronavirus family, all the beta viruses and beta coronaviruses, including the common cold, MERS, SARS, now COVID-19, are, when we talk about a protein being conserved, it means that it is, it doesn't change very much from virus to virus. So whatever the parrot of all of these had, it, these protein segments were, were uh, maintained over time. So that's, um, the term is called conserved um, uh, to, to represent the fact that the, these viruses have proteins in common because they've been conserved over time. So one interesting thing they found is that the people who had SARS-CoV-1, so the original SARS from 17 years ago, actually had immunity to, so these are people who didn't, they, they looked at people who had 
COVID, but they also looked at a group of people who did not have COVID. So absolutely did not. They were unexposed, unaffected. And those people um, actually had a, um, a response. So there was some cross-reactivity to um, prior exposure. So people who had, I got that a little turned around. So people who had SARS-CoV-1 actually had some immunity to COVID-19. Even though they hadn't been exposed to COVID-19, their body, their blood was actually able to mount a very rapid, uh, or indicated that they could in, uh, induce a rapid response to COVID-19, even though they had never been exposed to it. But they had been exposed to SARS-CoV-1. So that was the virus that was around that 17 years ago or so. What it becomes even more interesting is that uh, they, they, he goes over a concept in here that there were people that can be exposed but not infected. This is a big factor that nobody seems to really even think about is just because we're exposed doesn't mean we're going to be infected. I have said from day one that it is highly likely that everybody's going to be exposed. It's just a matter of what your body does with it. Some people may be exposed and their immune system fights it off at the barrier. It never even makes it in to develop antibodies, even though the body may now develop some of these T-cell antibodies. So where that becomes interesting is um, when they looked at immunity to the beta coronavirus family, which includes the common cold, about half of the people who had never been exposed to COVID had some degree of antibody response to COVID because there was some cross reactivity between the, the common cold and the COVID-19 in people who hadn't been exposed. So this means uh, we, we keep throwing around these terms that 90% of the population needs to be for herd immunity or 70%, but there may be a huge chunk of the population that is able to amount is able to mount an effective immune response who has never been exposed to COVID-19, but because they've been exposed to viruses similar to that, their body can mount that rapid response and fight it off and never even, um, it could be an asymptomatic group. They, this may be an entire group of people that we don't even, we can't even track because their bodies are so effective at fighting it off. So the bottom line, is that just like everything else, our immunity, our ability to fight from the, fight this off has everything to do with our underlying health, with the, which is a conversation which still to this day continues to not be made about how things like exercise, a good quality diet, stress management, sunlight exposure, vitamin D, C, A, all play a huge role on what our body is going to do when it is exposed. And now we throw on top the idea that people who have been exposed to the common cold may have some degree of immunity to COVID really starts to hopefully change your idea that we shouldn't be as terrified of this as we seem to think. There is no doubt that this is a serious scenario and there are people dying. Uh, you can certainly look at the percentages and those percentages of the total population are minuscule, but we need to look at how terrified people are from just the concept of being exposed. Forget being exposed, forget how many people are asymptomatic, forget asymptomatic, um, even mild, and even people who have symptoms and say this really sucked, but they did okay. That's what most people are gonna fall under. And there are a variety of reasons why people may not even uh, develop an antibody response, but they're still protected because of prior exposures. So, this particular um, video not quite as clear because it deals with some, some pretty deep topics in immunolo immunology. As always, as I mentioned, I will post the link to this particular journal study in the uh, comment section. So if you're really into this kind of stuff, you can read through that. Always welcome comments on that. And uh, as always, remember to like this video, share it with somebody who you think this needs, to, needs this information because they're terrified to even come out of their cave and uh, subscribe to the channel.